Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. And, well, I'm just outside my door. I'm in my backyard. I'm here with this plant that some people called yellow rocket. Its scientific name is Barbaria vul uh, vulgaris. And it's a harbinger of spring. If you live in the northeast of the United States, or in fact many parts of uh, Eurasia, you will see this plant flowering and has such bright, bright yellow colors. It's so eye-catching and it's something that people call a weed. In this yard around me, there's probably at least a dozen edible plants that were brought here by the early settlers from Europe as part of their herb and medicinal gardens. And today I'm going to focus on this plant here and tell you a little bit about its history, how to identify it, how it was used, how to get its scientific and its common names. So stay tuned. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're going to find. And here's the make this invasive. It's like it's awesome. Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes of terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's the so first let's break down the scientific name. Barbaria vulgaris. Vulgaris is a Latin word that means common. And Barbaria was thought to be associated with Saint Barbara. And Saint Barbara was the patron saint of soldiers and miners. And as this plant is also called wound rocket, it got its name because it was used as a poultice on wounds to help them heal and stem bleeding. Another name of this plant is bittercress because as it gets older, these leads become very bitter. Another name for it is wintercress. And it gets its name wintercress because this plant's seeds will sprout in late summer and early autumn. And then they'll grow, but they'll stay green and go dormant when it gets really, really cold during the winter time. And in the second part of its life cycle, it will grow explosively when temperatures warm up. And you can see it's a very large plant. It's a half a meter or two feet tall and they grow really, really fast in the spring and produce an abundant, abundant amount of yellow flowers. This plant here has actually gone through most of its flowering stage and it's on the very end of its, its flowers. So the name Yellow Rocket <laughs> refers to these bright colors and you can see them on roadsides, in fields. Sometimes they'll fill a whole field in the spring with this bright, bright yellow co color. So if you're driving down the roads and the back roads in the country in the springtime and you see these bright yellow flowers along the roadside or in a field, it's probably this plant here, Barbaria vulgaris Yellow Rocket. This plant is in the family called the mustards. It's also called, also called the cruciferi. And in this family are Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, broccoli, cabbage. There's a host of vegetables that are closely related to this group. And there's hundreds of genera and species, some very different from each other. This plant Though I love it, I think it's beautiful and speaks to springtime for me, is an invasive exotic weed for the Northeast Coast or for the United States. Uh, it originally came from Eurasia and it was brought by the settlers, as have been many of the plants. And I've been talking a lot about these different plants that you can find around your house and in a yard and a park or a local field near your house. And most of these invasives that I've been talking about were brought purposely by the settlers for their food and medicinal values. To identify this plant, one of the first things you can do is look at these flowers and you'll see that they have four petals and sometimes those petals curl backwards a bit. They have six stamens and a principal uh, style, which is the female part uh, in the very center of the flower. 
The other characteristic is after they flower, they produce these seed pods. These seed pods are called silix. And as you work your way down the plant, you can see that it has leaves that have several indentions on them and they kind of partially clasp the stems. And as you go farther down, the leaves get larger and have a characteristic shape that looks like this. Other plants in the mustard family have seed pods that look very similar to this and they're called silix. And for example, Brassica arepa, the seeds of Brassica arepa are harvested and the oil is squeezed out of them to make canola oil. Another closely related plant, again, it is in the mustard family. The seeds of another one of the brassicas are collected, ground up, some vinegar and salt and added to them, and they have a bright yellow color and that gives us our mustard, our table mustard that people like to put on hot dogs, for example. Another name related to the use of this plant, this plant was also called scurvy grass. Because scurvy is a disease where one lacks vitamin C and you start to develop a lot of symptoms of lack of vitamin C. And in the springtime, this was a cure for scurvy. I often talk about how the settlers had to stock up for the winter with dried meats and dried beans and vitamin C was in short supply. And so when springtime came, they're eager to get into some of these greens. And this is one of the first ones that would grow in the springtime and help relieve the symptoms of scurvy because they would be rich in vitamin C. I often talk about how I live in the Appalachian Mountains. I'm actually at 2,700 feet here in the Appalachian Mountains of Southwest Virginia. And here, locally, they, these were called Cressy Greens by the peoples that lived up in these log cabins far back in these hollows. And Cressy Greens were savored in the springtime and sought after as, the again, one of the first green things that were growing up that were rich in vitamins and provided a relief from all the dried foods and dried grains and dried beans and dried meat that they'd been eating through the winter time. Cressy greens, the young tender leaves of this plant before it grew up too big were uh, very tender. The bitterness apparently comes later as the plant gets older and it's still edible but it's just not pleasing in large quantities to the, the western palate. Bill Gibbons wrote a book called Stalking the Wild Asparagus in 1962. And he wrote about this plant in the book. And he was kind of a forerunner of a movement to start looking at things that you could eat locally. And he talked about how these plants like this one here and so many of these other plants around me have so much more nutrition and antioxidants and flavor than what he talked about were you know, vegetables that are grown in another state and may have been picked a week or two weeks before they hit the grocery store shelf. And he complained that compared to the things that you could pick fresh right outside your door, they lacked freshness, they lacked the vitamins, and they lacked that flavor. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Nature in Your Backyard. And again, I've been trying to focus on things that I think you'll see and you may ask yourself, hey, what is that yellow plant uh, growing over there? What is this organism that I found today? And as I see things and as they appear in my neighborhood, as they appear in my yard or as I see them flower, I try to bring them to you on this channel and talk about their ethnobotany, where they fit in the ecology, how they got their names, what peoples use them for, or maybe suggestion of what people can use for them for today. Remember, if you're interested in learning how to forage and eat some of these plants that you find around us, remember that there is many toxic species, many lookalikes. I'm telling you the story about these plants. If you want to learn more about that, Go to some of these forager websites. And try to meet someone locally in your area that can take you out, show you these plants, and show you when and how you can eat them and prepare them because 
It's a very interesting thing. But I want to bring you the science, the biology, and the stories. Thanks for watching my channel. Remember, if you like what I do, please subscribe. And I love getting comments. Send me questions. I love hearing from my viewers. Till the next video. We'll see you later.